Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome from me to the opening session of our 2014 annual meeting. A quarter of a century ago, in 1989, events were unfolding which would change our world. Poland would hold its first free elections. The Berlin Wall would be torn down and communist regimes would begin falling like dominoes. For those who witnessed this, for those who lived it, for those who grasped the new opportunities, life would never be the same again. And Poland, Poland has been at the heart of the transition success story and is back now as well at the heart of Europe. It's now a model for many other countries to follow. In the past year, we've yet again had a very strong institutional performance, delivering impact on the ground in line with the bank's mandate and under your guidance. In 2013, we had a near record number of operations, 392, just one short of the previous year's all-time high. Annual bank investment was 8.5 billion euros. But for all of our successful projects, we have to be honest about the challenges that many of our countries face. A number are stuck in transition, as we said in our well-publicized transition report last winter. The general picture of transition really does give cause for concern. There is a marked slowdown in reforms virtually throughout the region. The financial crisis, of course, did not help. Many feel left out. Politics is also sometimes turning against markets. Even though well-functioning markets, well-governed markets, transparent and inclusive markets are all seen to be the long-term solution. Forecasts now suggest that under current policies, current institutions, productivity growth will remain modest over the next decade, around 2 to 4% on average, and decline further in the following decade. That is a, a depressing prospect, and it does require rethinking of the way that the EBRD and the wider international community address the challenge. We need to find a way of getting transition unstuck to re-energize transition. It's a task of governments, of course, to adopt policies that hasten transition. It's the role of the EBRD to help governments in our regions of operation formulate those policies and build those institutions and set the right standards, as Prime Minister Tusk said. It's also the role of the EBRD to provide the finance, largely to the private sector, for projects that will have sustainable, sustainable impact because the right policies and resilient institutions are in place. Our second aim is to promote economic integration, both globally and regionally. Integration, as you all know, I think, has been at the heart of the transition project, helping to raise levels of growth and improve standards. We need to do much, much more on this score. And our third aim is to address common global challenges, such as climate change, water scarcity, food security, but also energy security, as Prime Minister Tusk highlighted in a recent speech. One example of the problem makes the general case, and that is Ukraine. I came straight to Warsaw from Kiev, and it's in Ukraine that we can see what the bank's medium-term directions really mean when they're translated from theory to practice. On Monday, I signed a Memorandum of Understanding with Prime Minister Yatsenyuk on an anti-corruption initiative agreed by the government, business leaders, and international partners led by EBRD. Corruption in Ukraine has been a scourge, eating away at economic and political life. Tackling the problem through an independent business ombudsman and other measures will help to build Ukraine's resilience a key goal of the medium-term directions. The agreement shows what can be achieved when the EBRD engages in policy dialogue. To re-energize transition in Ukraine does require the bank to accept more risk. But I strongly, strongly believe it's the right thing to do to scale up our support for Ukraine at this difficult political and economic juncture, to back the reforms, 
and to back the reformers and to help put the country onto a better transition track. The political tensions are, of course, beyond the powers of the EBRD to influence. But with backing from shareholders, we should work to support reformers everywhere. Successful, inclusive, integrated market economies are a foundation for democracy, pluralism, and, I believe, moderation. There continues to be demand for the bank as a tool to encourage change. Cyprus, long a member of the bank, has requested recipient status for what it expects to be a temporary uh, engagement. And I trust governors will vote strongly in favour of that request tomorrow, and we can help Cyprus transition through the difficult challenges that it confronts supporting the Troika programme. Libya has also requested to become a country of operations, and I hope for your equally strong support tomorrow for Libya to take the first step in this process by becoming a member of the bank. Poland's progress in democratic and economic transition spurs us on. The EBRD is dedicated to helping other countries of operation replicate that success and move forward economically and politically. Poland has evolved. The EBRD has evolved. We will both continue that journey of evolution. It's the key to future success. Thank you very much, and I wish you all an excellent annual meeting.